Believe it or not, there's one thing you can do that will do the following. Literally just one thing. Build more muscle, burn more body fat, reduce cravings, improve your hormone profile, give you a more positive mood, and probably just make you a better person. The kicker is you do this thing every day anyway. All you gotta do is do it better. You ready? Have better sleep. Put some focus on your sleep. Have a sleep routine. Sleep in a room that is effective for sleep. Basically prioritize your sleep and all those things I mentioned will improve even if you don't change your diet, your workout, or anything else. That's how impactful it can be. Oh, good. I thought that was going to be a pitch for Mona V or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, does that company still exist? No, I don't think oh, so. Oh, yeah. Remember does that? It? They went under, right, Doug? I don't know. I haven't I heard about him for a while. I think they went under. You know, my, my dad, my stepdad. Of course. Yeah. He did like all every, them, all them he did every MLM, mm -hmm. dude. Every single I used to see their like, people driving cars and they'd have the sticker on the back. <laughs> oh, they're still alive here. Oh, they are. Yeah. Wow. No That's way. That's impressive. Wow. You, you want to talk about a, a crappy, it's literally blueberries from the Amazon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all. It's no, no, it's just, a side it, But it's exotic. Oh, so. my God. Yeah, oh, my God. But yeah, because, I mean, sleep, that's just too. Too too simple. Yeah, well, you, that's, that's too simple. It literally to has about. that big of an impact, and I'm not like just saying this. Like every you, study done on it. You know what? It, it reminds me of. You guys remember that um, that little spiel that Jordan Peterson did with? I think it was on on Joe Rogan's podcast. We sh I think we've all shared it as like being like one of the more impactful things, where he's talking about the the first ten minutes of walking through the door, or the fifteen to twenty minutes you spend with breakfast with your wife yeah, every single yeah. day, and explaining that like that's that's like eighty percent of your life. Like if you master those little things, yeah. you're gonna have a really good life. And the, I feel like there's that those same types of rules apply to health and fitness. It's the the boring things that are not fun to talk about, like sleep every single night that if you master that like mastering that will make you healthier than like 90 percent everything of the population. becomes enjoyable not just like something in the future that you're working towards yeah, yeah. well modern uh modern life the default is uh it encourages terrible sleep like that's the default right so what do i mean by that well we don't get a lot of sunlight that's that impacts your sleep negatively um, most people have stimulants during the day and maybe depressants at night that impacts your sleep negatively. We're not active at all compared to what we should be doing. Um, we tend to eat late. We tend to be exposed to light right before we go to bed. And so, and what we do is we confuse being so exhausted or knocking ourselves out with um, good quality sleep to the point where this is true now. A lot of people might not admit this, but most people need something to go to sleep or something to wake up. That's a that's a hint. That's a clue that your sleep is probably um, not that great. So really just improving that. And how do you do that? You just kind of prioritize a little. Do a few things um, to your day and your lifestyle, and it makes a huge impact on everything else. In, not just your body composition, because studies show that, right? More muscle, less body fat, cravings. That's a big one but also your attitude and your mood. There was a study that I read that showed that when people had good sleep versus not as good sleep, um, their perception of their daily events became more positive or more negative. Mm. So in other words, um, you know, obviously there's objective things that happen around us, but our perception of what's happening around us is the filter. So you could perceive the same event, the same stresses as more or less stressful or certain things as more positive or less positive. This is what we often refer to as like your mood, right? How mm -hmm. your mood is. Sleep has a profound impact on that. So it's just one of those things we totally ignore. The way we tend to pay attention to it is by trying to knock ourselves out. Yeah. Um, or when we're extremely deprived from it. That's it's right. Like, okay, I have to pay attention that's to this right. That's well, right. That's right. Since you're talking about this, I think this is a, a good time to transition and, and share with the audience what happened or what transpired over the last, I don't know, it's been about 60, 30, 60 days uh, that's happened. Mm. Um, I don't know if the listeners know this, but uh, Uller, I don't know if they went completely under or they're in the process of shutting down. Yeah, they, they were known to sleep me towards the end there. Yeah, yeah. they've been... Uller, Chili Pad, Sleep Me right. first, which might have been the reason why they went under. I don't know if by just <laughs> all the too many rebrands, yeah. which was a product I absolutely have always loved and talked about because it's been such a, a game changer for me and Katrina is to be able to to balance our each of our temperatures individually and has made a huge difference on my sleep. 
And anyways, as soon as they went under, I, don't, I didn't even share this with you guys. I've actually been waiting to, for us to talk about this and when the first commercial came up. Um, the Almost the day that it came public that they were mm -hmm. not going to exist anymore, um, we actually got three different emails from uh, Jetbed, uh, Sleep8, and I can't remember who the third one right away. Because they knew that we had been oh, wow. with them hmm. for the last couple oh, wow, of years. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I didn't tell you guys this. It was really, it was flattering for sure. And I kind of went through and, and dug in what I thought, uh, like what I thought was the best one of the three of them and then started negotiations back and forth. And that's how we landed on Sleep 8. Yeah. Because eight Sleep? Is it Sleep 8 or 8 Sleep? Or sleep? sleep. Eight Sleep. Is it 8 Sleep or Sleep 8, Doug? It's 8 Sleep. Okay. Did I say Sleep 8 or you 8? Did. Yeah, oh, just, sorry. <laughs> 8 Sleep. So um, uh, they're... When you compare them, they they definitely understand sleep on a different level. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at some of the stuff that they do, so well, they're tracking way more than that's it. So a, a lot of these products, what they do, because um, studies show this actually has a profound effect on your sleep, is the temperature that you sleep in it makes a big difference. Okay, um, and I think people kind of know that they know what it feels like when it's too hot, especially um, or too cold, that they can't get really good sleep. Well, temperature control, that's a big one. That's, I think a lot of these companies do that. But uh, Eight Sleep also tracks your HRV, mm -hmm. your body temperature, deep sleep, heart rate, I think. So it tracks um, what's happening while you're sleeping. And then here's the crazy part. The bed adjusts temperature to maximize your sleep on the fly. That's crazy. So it's like AI, right? So you're sleeping on the bed. Yeah. It's tracking these things. It starts to learn what works best for you. And then it, it modulates itself throughout the night to improve deep sleep, to wake you up. So there's a feature on there where, so a lot of people don't know this. And I, I figured this out a long time ago. I talked about this on the podcast and we've had a lot of uh, listeners since uh, transition to what I'm about to talk to talk about because it was, it was a game changer for me. Everybody wakes up with an alarm and it's usually a loud phone or whatever. Well, I, I years ago, I learned how that how it's so jolting that it actually is, uh, has a negative effect on us. And that the way the human body evolved to wake up was more like temperature rises and the sun starts to, you know, kind of come up and you kind of just feels like you wake up naturally versus the, uh, you know, the, the shock from yeah. an alarm <laughs> that everybody gets, has PTSD from the, that alarm sound when you were a kid. Uh. In, <laughs> In fact, right now, people Give know this. this did, bro, it still gives me chills today I if know. I hear that like on a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so people don't know people know this. Like right now, if you can if you just randomly heard the alarm sound that you hear in the morning, you'll get this weird visceral response. I think people know that because you've conditioned your body through this like abrupt you're not supposed to wake up that way, basically. That's like a stress response, right? Mm -hmm. So I had bought this uh alarm clock that uh, mimicked the sun rising. And it was a game changer for me. I remember mm -hmm. I'd wake up and be like, wow, I feel yeah, the like same really one. good, right? Well, what Eight Sleep does is it uses uh, temperature and vibration to quietly, slowly wake you up. Now, how does temperature work? Well, if you're sleeping at, let's say, 55 degrees, um, if it starts to warm up and there's a period of time, and again, this, this particular product is smart, so it knows, it'll warm up and they're warming up naturally wakes you up as if the sun was coming up. Yeah. Pretty was, awesome, no, right? No, I'm yeah. excited. No, I'm super excited about the partnership. So, and and it seems to be a product that is as good and better in every other aspect that I felt Sleep Me and Chili mm -hmm. was. So, it's pretty cool. But I didn't tell you guys that about the all the companies that were coming up to. It was really cool. That's great. They had other ones too. Like, I don't, are you guys familiar with the Bed Jet? Or I am. The, that one's kind of like basic. It's like a, almost like an air conditioned fan is like blowing Yeah, in my there. cousin's a fan. He hmm. likes it, but yeah. it doesn't have the tracking and stuff. And the like other the one was, was really basic too. I, I really felt like Eight Sleep is like the, the, would be the best choice out there, which was pretty cool that, I mean, because originally Sleep Me came out. After us, it was a it was a, a friend of a friend type of uh, partnership where mm -hmm. they had they had done other companies with us and they introduced us and I loved the product and we used it and we've been with them for a long time and I had no complaints about it. I just think that the company didn't work out. Yeah. I don't know what happened logistically with the business or whatever like that, mm -hmm. but it didn't work out. And you know, I remember telling Katrina like, "Oh man, that's a bummer. It's like one of my mm -hmm. favorite products to talk about because of how much it's helped us." And it wasn't, but like it was literally like less than a week. 
dude. And that's we, a great, we were getting like that's a great feeling. I know, right? I thought that was pretty cool. We're like that. What do you always say, Adam? Or the hot girl at the party? That's right. The hot girl, the dance. <laughs> hot, hot girl, the dance at the dance. Yeah, or the hot girl. Everybody was stuck. Yeah, that's right. I just broke up with my boyfriend. Yeah, <laughs> eighty-five DMs. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Shoot, my up. girlfriend's dancing around the shoes. Yeah. 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 Hey, spe- <laughs> speaking of which, uh, Creatures of Habit has a, a pre-bed um, supplement now. Oh no, I know. It's their uh, nightcap. Yeah, uh, Mike's you know so funny. Mike sent it over. He's actually sent it over twice now because he sent it over, and I'm like, bro, I didn't get it. I swear. I said, I, I said, you, this was when I didn't know what it was. I'm like, is it the face mask? And he's like, no, bro. He's like, the face mask comes with it. There, there was product in the box. I'm like, oh, oh, you threw you it. Say, away. Yeah, no, no, I don't throw it away. You sent it to our studio, and we got so many employees in we here now, it, no. and we've given them all the green light. Like, hey, if you guys, you guys feel free to use whatever you want. I think the guys take it up with it, like seriously, <laughs> and so you get boxes sometimes. And I'm like, hey, send it to my house. So. He finally did send it over there, and I wanted to actually to ask you uh, what your thoughts are on it because it's got it's got a lot of good stuff that I we like talk it. about chamomile, yeah. CBD. I think L theanine yeah, is right, in right. there, GABA. GABA. Yeah, it's good. So a good sleep product. Okay, so there's I, I would put sleep supplements into two categories. One would be like knock me out, and there's some value in that, right? There's some value in like I just need something to put me to sleep because mm-hmm. even because that doesn't mean you're gonna have the best quality sleep, but yeah. some, but that is better than not. That's right? like my my travel, uh, yeah, kind of yeah. My, my when you're my off time zones eating, or whatever, yeah, yeah like, intervention. You like know, if you had like legit insomnia type of stuff, right? Like I, I could see like that being like a, <clears throat> a value. But then the other side is more of a regular use thing, which would have compounds that um, are beneficial uh, for sleep quality and can be used on a more regular basis and support. Um, natural sleep. That's what this is in there. Cause it's got the gab, it's got the theanine, uh, Rishi is in there, ashwagandha. These are all, um, you know, things you can use on a regular basis, CBD. Um, so it's, uh, it's good stuff, but people don't know creatures of habit. They make the high protein oatmeal that we talk about. Yeah. Well, they, so I taught when Mike dropped this, I was, t- we were on the phone and I'm like, Hey, what's the deal? Are you moving away from oatmeal? He's like, no, no. He's like, he goes, the vision was always, uh, that's why he called it creatures of habit is like to have this, oh. this, all these different things that he does habitual in his day to optimize sleep, energy, movement, oh. strength, so that, well, that makes sense. So he has plans for other products. I don't know what they're going to be in the future, but he's like, yeah, no, this is just one of many things that I want to do that have changed my life and has improved my health and fitness journeys. Today's giveaway is the RGB bundle maps, anabolic mass performance and maps aesthetic. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this video. Um, Also, subscribe to this channel um, and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale right now on some programs. Our beginner workout program, Map Starter, is 50% off. And then we have a bundle that includes Maps Anabolic and Maps Prime. That's a starter bundle. That's also 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking of sleep, I got to tell you, the most annoying thing happened last night where I'll, I'll tell you guys what happened and then I'll tell you about the the, the thought process that I had. So la- I was the night before I had terrible sleep. Um, we had, you know, come back from vacation and the baby seems to be going through our youngest. She's seven months is going through a leap, uh, which we've talked about. You can actually look these up. They're, they're actually so accurate. It's crazy. I, like, I trip it's out. It's so weird. Like so, something okay, will happen, okay. and I'm like, let me look this up. Oh, there it is. There's okay, so on. so do you think it's kind of horoscopy? Is that why? No, it's it's I accurate know, every cause, time. Because sometimes I feel like it's so accurate, I get blown away, and I'm like, is this like because I'm biased, and is it because it's, it's been like, like that so far with us? It has too. I, I Katrina and I, and we still uh, we don't use it as regularly as we did when Max was one and two years. Like after yeah. two years old, we really slowed down using it. But every once in a while, if he's like acting really abnormal, like he just came out of one, I think I shared this with you guys a couple weeks ago. She's like, you know what? I haven't looked at the app in a long time. Like, what's supposed mm-hmm. to be going on with him age wise? She's like, oh my God. It's a leap. Like, this is a leap. And this yep. is like the, his symptoms or the things that he's acting and what he's doing are really aligned. And I tell you what, I, I recommend this to people that are parents with, you, you know, infants and toddlers because at the very least, um, becoming aware of that your kid is going through that gives you 
a higher tolerance and more patience. 100%. Because otherwise you're like, oh, they're acting up. Like, what's going on? Yeah. It's like, no, his brain is literally developing. Yeah, and, you, and so I, I have this empathy, yeah. like, right away. Like, I, even though I'm, I'm frustrated initially with the way he's acting or what he's doing, but then I go like, oh, well, this I understand why now. He's yep. trying to figure out this or his vision is now coming together this mm -hmm. or he's just now starting to really understand and comprehend sentences and so it's like okay so it makes me more patient so as parents parent. have known this for a while um is that your your kid doesn't just linearly grow physically or mentally it's like all of a sudden all the stuff happens and then it slows down for a while and then all of us they go through growth spurts they go this they do this with uh, brain development and all that stuff as well so those are leaps and they have they place a higher demand on the body's resources. Their sleep tends to get uh, disrupted, um, and all kinds. So the last leap uh, my my baby went through, she went through the leap, and right after, all of a sudden, she's like rolling and doing all these different things that she wasn't doing before. So you could clearly see what happened. So anyway, she's going going through once. So the sleep was bad. So last night, I'm like, you know, Jessica and I are like, let's just we need to go to bed early. Like let's just organize everything right, set everything up, go to bed early. And, and that's what we did, right? We get everything set up. Everything was good. And I go to bed and I'm laying in there and I'm drifting off nicely. And uh, Jessica was sleeping downstairs because I had taken turns with the baby. So I was upstairs feeding her so she could go downstairs. I feel this tapping on my shoulder. I turn around and it's Jessica. It's like 1130 at night. I'm like, what's going on? She goes, one of the fire alarms is like beeping. It's got like a low battery. <laughs> oh my that's God, it's so annoying. Fine. So I get up. So now I got to get up, right? So now I'm like fully awake. And it was a fire. I didn't, I didn't even know that we had one there. So where I live, um, it's like a kind of like a tri-level almost. And we have these really high ceilings, okay, in some parts of the house. It's like a I don't, tw 20 footer. I don't know how the hell they put a fire alarm. <laughs> How you change the battery on this thing? Uh, you but it, those huge extension ladder just to reach the. That roof. was like the one at our Turkey house that I got hit with. Uh, that happened. It did you? Yeah, you know our ceilings there are yeah. massive, and we have one all the way up in the corner. And How'd I you get to, it? Well, we have one of those crazy like twenty foot ladders. I had to go get that ladder. And well, go this get is eleven thirty at night. I have a step ladder. That's as high as I go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're like this with a broom? <laughs> no, it's, I couldn't even reach it if I had a broom. So it's way up, and it's uh, doing this beep. You know, every like yeah. minute. <laughs> Would you do Beep. throw shit That's at it? so annoying. You're so breaking. I'm like, what do, like, I'm so frustrated. I'm like, oh, there's, what can I do? And I'm like, literally in my head, I'm like, I'm going to throw things at it and just uh, crush it. But then I'm going to wake up the kids. Yeah, you know? yeah. So we ended up just turning up the sound machines and trying to sleep through it, which oh we did. Oh my God. I know. So how would, how Bro, literally I, I was daydreaming. Can you ever go to sleep and you dream mm -hmm. about what you want to do? Yeah, yeah. So in my dream, I was so annoyed with it because you would hear it beep every mm -hmm. once in a while. That I got my gun and I shot it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I woke up. I'm like, thank God I didn't do that. Dude, what that, a bad that idea. That kind of brings me back. I mean, you, you ever had one of those possessed toys that you just have to get rid of where the middle of the night, like it just turns on like, oh, randomly. That would freak me out. And so we had, this is a long time ago. This is when the kids were little and I was at my old house. And it was one of those like dinosaur robot, like you, you, you just turn it on and it walks around and it's like, rah, 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 and mm -hmm. it like makes all these like weird noises and it just lit up and it was like, rah, rah, rah. it started like going really slow and then it turned off. And then I, I go to like mess with it and I'm turning it off. It wasn't even on. It was just, it just decided to turn on and then <laughs> go back to sleep, wake up again and it's doing that, but then it's going in super slow motion. It's like with, with the weird, creepy, like, oh, rah, 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 rah. I grabbed it, thing, I threw it outside to, <laughs> to break it. And I look outside my my door that's like a sliding glass door. And it's out there, just turns back on. It's like, rah, I'm going to fucking burn that thing <laughs> when I wake up. <laughs> you just remind me of a story when Katrina and I first started dating. Um, I used to have this. Uh, um, projector for a, a TV screen in my bedroom, and it like, and I had a, I actually had a big, long master bedroom, and so it projected a hundred inch screen on my wall. And uh, she used to come over and we watch. This is like when we first started dating, and she'd come over and watch. And this was like the first time like she saw me like lose my shit because I, something was wrong. I needed like a new bulb and stuff, and uh, ordered it. And you know, of course, I've got this new girl I'm dating, and so I don't need, I don't want to be a chump and not know how to change my stuff yeah. so, so of course i'm doing it you gotta fix it you gotta establish that you can do bro, it right but oh my god it was like the to. most complex 
thing I had ever done, dude, to just change the goddamn bulb in a projector. I thought it would be like so basic and simple. And I've got instructions out. And she's like sitting there trying to help me and stuff like that. And I eventually, dude, I got so mad. Remember, I used to have that condo. Yeah. This is before YouTube. I fucking ripped it off the wall, went to the balcony, <laughs> and fucking chucked it off the balcony. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Such a man thing. She to was do. like, "Oh, dude, I was so mad." She was like, "Okay, I guess we're, just, we're not gonna oh. watch a movie tonight." <laughs> thank God she, she still, didn't leave you. I know. Thank yeah. God she stuck around with me. You know what I'm saying? I was so oh, no, oh man, I was so Skank mad. I lost my shit. Just threw all these hands. The butt, so. the thing exploded yeah. when it hit the ground. Oh, that's annoying. I had once. Uh, this was a long time ago. One of those toys, Justin, that you're talking about. Yeah. Where it would just turn on randomly, and I finally got frustrated, and I pulled the batteries out. And then in when I went to bed, it turned it on. It still turns on. Yes. And I was like, what? Yeah. And so I stomped it to death because yeah. I was like, this is weird. Well, there's another battery that goes to the uh, other part. Yeah. Can, yeah. <laughs> a little and then I stomped power. it. I a lot of those smoke alarms out. have that. I've experienced that before where you like unplug it, then you think it's going to, oh, then it has a battery, no. then you take that battery out, then it has like a little watch battery oh, in it. It's like, it's like backup, backup. And you're like, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. <laughs> you talk about leaps. Uh, Max is, was going through, I, I mean, I don't know if I'd consider, I didn't go on the app and see if this was a leap, but it, it seems like an, a new thing where I can, I can literally see him processing uh, like new words or a new sentence that you say, and he's in repeat mode. So he's in this, like, if he hears something new, he's going to re repeat it for sure because it's just new to him. And, or he'll see Katrina and I having a conversation and hear something like that he's never heard before. And then he, re he repeats it. And you can actually like see the wheels spinning and like mm -hmm. him doing it. We're wrestling around and uh, yesterday and uh, he's, uh, you know, we just, I, of course I let him feel like he's, challenging me a little bit every once in a while I'm like oh, oh you know and then i'll put him in like a his arm behind his back or put him in a full nelson and so i'm doing stuff with <laughs> Those him are pretty hardcore moves. <laughs> yeah I, know, I don't fuck around wow. bro i don't mess around right so i don't want him to be a wuss you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, no, katrina and hey, katrina has to leave the room a lot of times she's like i can't watch this you're being so hard I'm like, he's laughing it's not yeah. hard trust he me he enjoys it's, this yeah there's a whole other level of hard here we're not even there yet right so <laughs> just wait till he gets older yeah you know? so my new my new thing that i was saying to him was he'd come at, he'd come right it at me, dive at me, and I was, and I would do like a, a, a different move, and I said, "You've never seen this one before," and I'd say that to him, and he just thought it was so funny, and so like that's his new thing, right? He attacks me out of nowhere, and he's like, "You've never seen this before," and he like, hit me in the nuts, or just, yeah, 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 you've never seen this before. And he, tried, does, he tries to do like some oh, weird yeah, move. Dude, that's don't classic. ever, Rolling. don't ever. Like here's a lesson that I'll tell people listening right now: don't ever react strongly when your little one hits you in the nuts, because then they realize, oh, this they, is, that's they a power. Yeah. This is. Now, yeah, now my toddler <clears throat> thinks it's hilarious. So now if I'm sitting down or whatever, he's going to throw something at me. He's aiming for that. Because oh, yeah. he hit me on accident. I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. I remember that reminds me of like when I was out at the park and uh, when the kids were a little smaller and uh, we, we'd play like that. We played rough and like, cause this, we have always played rough and yeah. like tumble and all that. And so they would, I was like throwing the football, at my friend, we're getting the dogs, out. everybody's out, you know, getting energy expended. And uh, they were just, trying to come at me as I'm, I'm trying to catch football and I just would stiff arm them and like push them on their back, you know, and they'd come in and we just started to do this like straight up like Kung Fu <laughs> where I'm just like throwing a kick, like just, you know, I'm not hurting them, but it, we're, we're all like playing into it and like yeah. they would fly and like roll out of it and all. And then these parents would walk by and just be like, Oh, <laughs> like somebody was like going to call CPS on me or something. No, I'm gotta, just like, dude, yeah. You we got, play rough. Especially if you have, um, well, I mean, this is going to sound stereotypical, but it's true, I think, especially with little boys. They, 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 oftentimes they have to get out this loud, rambunctious kind of like, I got to throw shit energy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my two-year-old, he, he'll do that. He needs to, every day, run really hard, throw shit, and scream at the top of his lungs. Well- <laughs> It just so happens that, you know, Jessica can't, she hates super loud screaming. So she gets really mad at him. So I'm like, honey, he's got to get out this energy. So like we do this thing now where uh -huh. we're going to start doing this thing where I'm going to, where I'm going to say to him, do you want to scream? And then I'm, she's going to go outside. So she's, yeah. cause he's, he can scream real loud and yeah. then I let him get that shit out. Yeah. Scream louder, throw something. Dude. And he just goes nuts. And then he goes to sleep nicely that night, you know, <laughs> but they have to get it out. It's, it's interesting it how, how different like every kid is, right? We, when we were up in Truckee, we had my best friend and his, his kids, right? And they, their Hunter, his son is a year older than Max. And then they have a daughter who's a year younger than Max. 
And their night routine of getting ready to go to bed is so opposite of Katrina. Oh. <laughs> First of all, they let their kids stay up at least an hour, an hour and a half later than ours. And then Mac, like what we do, it's like, there's the, I've t shared it before, like, you know, bath time, even to this day, bet once he hits the bed to read, you don't get off the bed. Right. Still, it's like, we read a couple books. Then there's a story time after it. It's like an hour and lights are all dim and down. Mm -hmm. It's like this like hour of drug. My buddy takes, goes, to, brings the kids out to the golf course when we're out there and sprints and runs and tackle and like they they exhaust him wow that's their way of getting him ready for bed and i just like that's so wow. wild to me i'm yeah. like it's so odd. if we do that to max he's not going to bed dude yeah. he is not going to sleep that way up. but they also you have to figure it out their son their son is like total different speed than than mm -hmm. max's he's a little bit more aurelius where he's, mm -hmm. he's loud he's more aggressive he's more physical like that where he he's got to expend that energy and I think back to that uh, video, I don't know if one of you guys were the ones that shared that, but I saw that uh, viral video of Jordan Peterson talking about uh, boys and, you know, and, and, and education and then making sure that you exhaust them. Like it's, you think you, the kids are, the boys are getting enough play. He's like, they're not. Yeah. It's like you just, when you think they need, or they've had enough, give them more and then give them more, give them so much that you physically exhaust them. They need that. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that that we just don't do that of, look, in today's society. We don't do that's that. That's true for a lot of kids. N not all kids, but for a lot of kids. If you leave kids to their own devices and they're playing and having fun, they play until they're exhausted. Mm -hmm. They don't stop when they're right. not exhausted. Like, I'm done. They keep going and going. Like, if you've ever played with a kid in a pool or on a playground, oh, yeah. Like, you're tired way before they are. They want to keep going. And uh, we don't do that. Like we we tell the, like we expect these kids to sit in a chair, listen to someone for what six hours, little kids, and without doing that. Well, then you add to that, and then they come home from a school like that, and then we allow them to sit on TV, video games, or iPads, yeah. and it's like, dude. And then we wonder why they have this attention deficit yeah. disorder. Yeah. It's like. Well, maybe they they need to get a lot of this energy expended, you know, and they're weird. not getting it throughout the day, and so it, it falls on us as parents to make sure. You we know, do what's that. funny. Yep. People understand this with pets. If you have a dog, right, you're right, and you don't go walk your you dog, chew the shit out of your house. Yeah, and everybody yeah. knows, like, and oh, go, act out. Yeah, you got to go take your dog for some run, and depending Enough. on the breed, right, you got to run him more or less or whatever. They're not like, here's a medication, chill your dog out, so he could not bite shit or whatever well that yeah. was the thing i mean it's like when we were even on vacation in hawaii it was like okay we're just going out we're doing these things that are like physically taxing you're getting a lot of sun you know mm -hmm. or you're playing in the water or you're doing like they were so busy that like their behavior was amazing that was like the best time ever you know with them and it's like Dude, it, it, it you, you got to think that that has a massive. I mean, there's such a deficit there in that setting yeah. of education where it's like if we could like combo the two together, get them as excited about learning while being physically active. You yep. know, what a better result! I get. see a massive difference. I have the whole Max's entire journey so far, four years of going through this with him. Massive difference when I make an effort first thing in the morning, as soon as that sun is up, to get outside. Yeah. yeah. To get outside and play with him. Yep. Soon, better, and it doesn't huh? have to be crazy. Just just get him out and let that sun hit on him yeah. and, and play around with him and be outside yep. for a couple hours. His behavior the rest of the day and his sleep that excuse me, that night. Well, that's is, proven. Is is in, you know, it's so funny. It's so funny. It's proven, and yet we still as parents don't a lot of times account for that your kid's acting out he's doing so many things you don't go like at least i do now i go like oh well we haven't we didn't take him outside early this morning mm -hmm. we haven't we haven't played with him all that much like of course he's being a little shit right now because he needed to expend all that energy so yeah. it's so important yeah. dude i, I gotta bring this up though since i mentioned why there was one like development like so if, after you left like we were getting coffee down at this place nearby and it's one of these like food trucks and and we're sitting there and I'm 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 sitting with the kids while Courtney's kind of going to grab the coffee. And she's, you know, taking a while to come back. And I'm kind of looking around. And then she comes back and this guy's kind of talking her ear off, following her over, and he keeps talking to her. And he's 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 saying all these things about like uh Jupiter and like, mm -hmm. you know, the whatever like uh, astrological things that tie into uh 
uh, how many beneficial things are happening right now and blah, blah, blah. It's like all this like, you know, wizard voodoo, like <laughs> uh, astrology stuff, yeah, yeah. right? And I'm just like, oh, Lord, like roll my eyes, you know? And then he just keeps going on about it. And he's, he's asking Courtney more questions. She's like, she's totally being nice, to, but, but not like, you know, cutting him off. You know, and so it was like he just he looked at that as an opening to keep talking. And so we ended up getting this pitch for like some fake bank that he basically was like promoting he has and he could get us loans and he what? could do all this stuff. Like he was literally he literally like went rambling on for so long that like I was like, Whoa, 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 whatever you're saying, like I am not interested. I we are good and we're just trying to enjoy ourselves. I appreciate if you go. Wow. You know, I had to actually do that. To the point, and I'm like, I got a bit of tolerance where I'm not going to be a total dick right away. But like, he was like totally like sitting himself down. He was starting to write, and I was like making fun of him as he's doing. Not he's not getting a, any social cues, anything. Right? Yeah. And he's writing his number down on this uh, napkin and all this stuff, and he's trying to like sell these numbers and like financial terms and things to sound like he knows what he's talking about. And I'm like, this guy's so full of shit. And so, anyways, like I'm like, we're out of here. Like he just wouldn't get the hint. And so we all just like kind of left and it just left a really bad impression on us. And he was doing this to also the, the, the people that were selling the coffee and like the business owners and trying to like scheme with them a bit and all this, what we noticed, Courtney noticed and pointed it out. He had like a, a, a band on his arm that was like, he's like basically like fresh out of the hospital. Oh one. no. Oh. And for two, he had mentioned like some details to us, like just, super transparently like that his wife had kicked him out of the house and whatever. And like the cops were like after him and blah, blah, blah <laughs> and all this stuff. And I'm just like, Whoa, this guy, it was so much that I was just like, all those details just kind of left me. Courtney's very detail oriented. Yeah. She remembered every single thing that she's like, wait a minute. Uh, I guess like he was running away. The, the cops from Sedona were looking for him. He's in Kauai. And so she actually like, uh, filed like called them and said hey do you know of this guy and this character they're like yes oh no she, way she remembered the, his exact like he's like it's almost my birthday and she's like it was this day and they looked at the records like that literally is his birthday <gasps> and and so like so he, he was honest he was on i mean that was real he's a con man he's a legit con man that was like running around like uh kawaii trying to uh, basically just like hustle all these people <laughs> to give them their financials. Wow. And so, uh, so they're, they're like talking back and forth with, with Courtney and telling him about, I guess he's like domestic abuse, all this crazy stuff on his rap sheet. Uh, but, uh, it was great because the kids felt super uncomfortable and they were like describing it to me and like, we were talking about it and I'm like, pay attention to that, yeah. pay attention to how people make you feel. Yeah. And when you get an impression of them and like, uh, listen to your intuition, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And so that was like a good lesson. It's like, this guy literally is a criminal. And he was just like, just decided to like push himself in our, in our sphere. You yeah. ever think about that? I always think about like, cause I had, I actually had family that was my, my grandfather on my mom's side was a uh, like legit con artist uh, in and out of prison, like her whole life. And I've always thought like, you know, how many times do you get like, how many times do you think you've encountered someone who's like a legit con artist? And maybe you just, maybe you did a good job of like, ah, oh, I'm good. No, thank you. And you pass mm -hmm. it up. But like, there's, there's a lot of people that are scammers and schemers and doing stuff like that. Like how many times has somebody potentially actually tried to target you? You don't even know it. Well, even, yeah. And the cops were saying like, well, I'm glad you didn't fall for it. I'm like, well, duh, it's like <laughs> obvious, you know, but yeah. he's like, no, you'd be so surprised. Like how many people he's completely manipulated and have fell for it. Is, is he like, charismatic or something? No, he's just pushy. He's just the pushy. Like, I mean, well, you, okay, but you have like a super, I, you're right. yeah, you're, I, right. I, you're, I, on the, you're automatically skilled. You don't like some good people. Just bullshit yeah. <laughs> just bullshit like, doesn't even <laughs> stick for a second. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You're on the, you're on the other extreme for sure. Yeah. Well, I told you guys, I have a friend. I won't, I won't roll him under the bus uh, on the podcast, but he's, a, he's, he's been a pathological liar since we were kids. He's still a friend of ours. Um, we all have like this, you know, I don't know. He's like got a piece of all of our hearts. So everybody puts up with his bullshit. 
but he fucking lies like unbelievably and you can't call him on a lie because he, he's really good so you and, just don't even try yeah so you just yeah. let you just let him t and we just oh that's you know so and so you know we just say this that's oh so and so that's just how he is but he came here before and when he left you guys were like hey he's a really smart guy huh i'm like no bro oh. <laughs> he is not dude he fucking is really good at bullshitting like he's just got that craft dude where and he can have a conversation from, uh, from politics to sports to business and and really hold his own in in a conversation with other really intelligent people i've watched him do it he's done it with me many a times and because i know him i know he's full of shit but he gets around other people wow. yeah. and people all the time are like hey man i really like your buddy like he's he's really a smart dude i'm like no dude he's not Still lives at home with his parents, bro. He's fucking 40, oh. 40 something years old. Ain't doing shit with his life like that, but he bullshits all the fucking time. Like some I, people have yeah. that art, dude. Like skill, I, yeah. I, I, I'm usually suspicious of people anyway, but I remember once as a kid, this guy came up to our house. I was probably 15 or 16. He came up to our house to sell magazine subscriptions and he was kind of like fast talking my mom and this and that. And I don't know. It just seemed kind of suspicious to me. So I said, what high school? What's your teacher's name? Okay, I'll get a magazine as soon as I get in contact with you. And the guy bolted. I remember my mom was so proud. Like, you spotted a, a con artist. You yeah. saved me from, like, it felt so good. <laughs> but he was totally bullshitting us, obviously. Yeah. You know? you know, sometimes those people that come to your door nowadays, what they're doing is they're casing neighborhoods. Mm, Did you know that? Yeah. I've heard about so that. So I, years ago, I got burglarized. And um, when I didn't know this at the time, but it makes sense now. Most burglaries don't have, like in the movies, they happen at night, right? Middle of the night. They don't do that in the middle of the night. It's middle of the day Yeah, when people aren't home because they're at work. And what they do, what the police officer said they do, because it was a ring that they busted up here in the Bay Area not that long ago. What they'll do yeah. is they'll wear like a, like they look like they're with the electric company or mm -hmm. they look like they're plumber, whatever. Yeah, people don't and, even question that. And they, not, they ring doorbells and they see who's home, who's not home. What cars are in the driveway? What cars aren't in the driveway? Yeah. And then they know when you're not home and when you're home. And then in the middle of the day, they'll go in and they'll break in and steal your shit. And they usually case nice neighborhoods because they know that they have stuff in the house. That they what was yeah. that? Somebody just did this recently where they got really far. Well, one, I know that one YouTube guy who uh, famously got uh, all the way into the Warriors stadium their back entry level where all the players go because he looked kind of like clay thompson and he dressed mm. like him wow. and just everybody just kind of like just rushed it let him what go bold well, move yeah just told and then was he was shooting on the court and everything like that i can't think of, you know who he is it's, it's a big dog tv i think is his youtube he's huge huge and he's been banned for life now somebody else just did something very similar where they pretending to be either like pg and &E or something like that, and they just walked right through. What was it? It was something else. We all talked about it. Mm. Oh. They were carrying something. A uh, ladder. Yes. Oh, if yeah. You, you carry a ladder. That's what it was. You're gone. Nobody thinks the wiser. You yeah. can walk into a movie yeah. theater anywhere, apparently. Yeah. I mean, if you think <laughs> about it. crazy? If you're a kid checking tickets. Yeah. Why else would you have a ladder? You must be fixing yeah, something. Yeah, two dudes looking with like, wait, with like, you know, like tool belts and a ladder walk by. Oh, we're here to, you know, we're supposed to do some work. Are oh, you going to let him in? All right. You yeah. look legit. Yeah, you're a teenage kid. You don't know any better. Please. You know what's so funny is if I would have known that fact as a teenage I boy, I would have done that Just shit. for fun. Yeah. <laughs> My buddies and I would have done that for Dude, sure. Dude, I mean, is, there's people that have crashed like the White House, right? Like with, with just like these parties yeah. and have just blended in just enough to where they get through every, Dude, the I, I got to, so I don't want to say too much because uh, this is a, a private story for, but, but I know somebody, you want to hear something? This is cr like, one of the crazy, and this is real. One of the craziest stories I've ever heard in my life. So you guys know how in California, I don't know if they still have this. They had the street, the three strikes law, mm -hmm. where if you commit three, I think, I don't know if it was misdemeanors or whatever. Three felonies. Was yeah, it three felonies? Yeah, three you felonies. You go away for like forever. A, yeah, a long I think time. it was for life, yeah, right? Yeah, so time. anyway, this person uh, got caught twice doing something and had two felonies, um, career criminal. Anyway, they, would, they were uh, burglarizing homes is what they did. Went into this wealthy house, broke into a safe, uh, stole a bunch of stuff, and got away with it. Well, he had um, some, what do they call drives? What do they call where you, where you store computer it's information? Like a scan disk or whatever? Like, like a hard drive. drive. Like a hard drive or something like that? Mm -hmm. This is a crazy story. He uh, went through it and saw um, like children being abused on the hard drive. And he had this like moment where he's like, what do I do? So he tried to turn it in anonymously and found out that they can't persecute 
the person unless they have a per, the person turn it in. Oh my prosecute. God. Uh, if prosecute. I turn it in, pars, pers, sorry, prosecute. Yeah, prosecute. Yeah. If I turn it in, I'm going to get my third strike. This is a real story? This is a real story. Wow. No way. I swear what to God. a conundrum. Really? He turned himself in. Wow. Turned himself in. Bro, if you're a judge, you got to let that Yeah, get. you got to. They didn't give him life, it. but he did have to spend some time in jail, but completely reformed himself. It was like a wow. life-changing moment. Became a totally different person. It's almost like a, what a crazy story. It's like a lifetime movie. Are they, movie out? Something. Huh? Are they out? Yeah, and they're totally. I don't want to say too much. Let's interview them. No, I can I don't think they want to talk about it. But really? They, yeah, I don't know. That's a good story. Isn't that crazy? Good story, Especially yeah. if they're reformed. Isn't I mean, that crazy? Right. That's way crazy. Could you imagine? Like the, he's. Oh, I can't imagine. Like that. he had just, this. Gonna, like he's like this. Especially that if you process that night. You especially if you in. know you're gonna get it. He's gonna get it. Right. Like but if you these know, kids. What do you do? Like yeah, exactly. That that's. I mean, imagine you, you're you're a criminal, okay, and you do something I like know. that, and you hundred percent know, like I'm gonna turn this in, and I'm getting time. It's just a matter of how much time I'm getting. Right. And what well, happened? at the time it was three strikes, and that law you could not, uh, yeah, there was you couldn't no appeal. Right? Yeah. There was no exceptions. It was like those minimum sentence laws. Yeah. So he's like, I'm going to jail for life, but they did let him out after a certain period of time. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. That, is crazy. that is crazy. Speaking of the White House, huh. uh, I guess they found some cocaine. The <laughs> hey, just, before you came in, Justin and I were talking about this. Yes. What is worse? Okay. okay. Getting caught with cocaine at the White House or getting a blowjob at the White House? Yeah. Both. You get caught both times. Yeah, but what's 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 yeah, but like in terms of okay, well, we we say our (laughs) opinion, but like the public perception, it's it seems interesting. Uh, which one they would weigh is like a worse offense. Doug made a good point. What was your point, Doug? You said, yeah, yeah, well, it's job performance, right? Uh, So, what's going to improve job performance and what's going to cause your job performance to go down, you know? Well, that's our depends on the person, though, right? Yeah, 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 I was like, you know, you can be pretty productive on cocaine. (laughs) That is true. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But also, you can be, you make real highly of yourself and do things that are questionable. Biden needs some cocaine. Have you ever heard him talk? Jesus Christ. Give give that guy some. Um, I think the blowjob would be worse because he's, you know, because obviously. Oh, he's worse. Blow well, job. because it's, it's it, you're talking about Bill Clinton. Because it's with another person. It's with another person who worked for him. He's already, he's also married. Let's so pretend not only it that, was also two presidents that did both these things. Okay, let's just pretend it was two presidents that did both these things. I think okay. the public would view the cocaine as worse, to be honest with you. You think? I do. I do. I think they would view the drug abuse. Maybe as now. Worse. I think maybe culturally, like back in uh, when that happened, I think it was probably the opposite. I think people expect. What do you think? I think people expect to a certain degree no, what that you, what, powerful men. I mean, like, what do you think? What do you mean about the cocaine and the blowjob? Well, I mean, I don't really care. We don't know who had the cocaine, but we kind of know. Right? I mean, I said let's <laughs> let's pretend know. let's pretend like it's. You know what's funny to me, by the way? Can, okay, we don't know whose cocaine it was. Really? Right. The White House? There's not a camera ch- everywhere? They're trying to throw everybody on the bus hey, with this, too. Come like, on, they know. There's hey, like, cameras oh, everywhere. no, it was in the conference of, room of, where the of vice course president they, is. Of course like, they know, but I mean, like... They lost the, the I bet, film? I bet there is a uh, a higher percentage of people in the White House that do cocaine than don't. Probably. Yeah. I mean, this, you're a politician, dude. Right. Okay. A career politician. Yeah. Do you think more of them cheat on I their think, spouses or more of them do cocaine? Oh, that's, Ooh, that's, yeah. that's more cheat. Yeah. Because a lot of, a lot of uh, for, you know, and this is my, my little bit of experience with, uh, you know, politicians and stuff like that. I had a, a close, intimate friend that was close to uh, a presidential candidate a while back. And one of the things that she told me that was really interesting and fascinating, and she said that, the, the the candidate at that time was telling her they they have like this unsaid code that you don't talk about s- side pieces and wives and families because everybody has like their their political family oh that like they, this is what looks good yeah the, that yeah, and a lot of times perception. that's not even the the real, the real wife family. the real family or nothing like that is literally like this person wow. and they and they met years ago and it was like, an agreement Almost exactly like house of cards house of cards yeah, yeah. and i thought house of cards depicted that really accurately yeah. and that, i knew about that before that show came out and i remember seeing it, i'm like oh shit man i wonder if that really is that accurate and you know i've heard you know, random stuff about presidents that we've had that their families that everybody thinks they know about aren't even like their real families. Yeah. They got families in other places that they keep on the hush. Well, and think, this is their yeah. political wife, 
that, that everybody sees. Did you guys see the video of, uh, so obviously we're alluding to Hunter Biden, right? Because he had all those pictures of him smoking oh, crack and doing shit. Yeah. <laughs> did you see the video I that- never that, guessed. Did you see the video that was released of him driving 174 <laughs> miles an hour on the freeway, smoking crack? Yeah. You didn't see that? Did you see that? Yeah, I did. I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't see the video. But I too heard, much. Dude, heard if, could you imagine if you're the president and that's your kid? I'll be like, listen, I'm going to have to beat the shit out of you right now. <laughs> like, I'm literally going to have to physically beat the crap out of you because you're such. Well, we're only about a, we're only about a right decade now. away from, you know, WWF wrestlers being our president. So, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. right around the corner from that. Dude. Yeah, we're dude, fucking, and that would be an upgrade. So. Yeah, 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 dude, we're right around the corner from that. It's coming. Yeah. So get ready. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that the, that I think that the, the reason why all this stuff is coming out about um, Hunter, because before, obviously, they suppressed the hell out of it. We all yeah. know that now, right? They said it was fake and whatever. It was all real. But I think that it's all coming out because I think the Democrats don't want Joe Biden to run again. And they're going to try to, to – because because he's not he's not going to win. He's, he can't win. He's too – uh, or both parties are colluding, and they they you know want to keep him there, so he's going to lose anyway, and then uh, Trump's going to win. And I don't think the same yeah. old shit show. Yeah, I think they want they want Biden out, and they're probably going to say, "Hey, look, we'll let your son off easy," which they did, but you got to step down because we're going to primary, you know, these people who we think will win because we think you're going to lose. I thought Justin hit it on the head. They're they're trying to position uh, the cocaine at Kamala because it's right next to her. Uh, her, her her car right no they yes. said like that the, they said the place it was at was what? near the v yeah you yeah, didn't hear they that started to yeah push it in that disposable. direction like it was, yeah <laughs> like it was in the conference room or something they changed rooms where they found it because like, it's, it's closer to they're the like vice come president. here we're gonna have to can we have a, can we have a, a quick minute well, here real quick where they can point it's that or like she, you're gonna I have guess, to take a fall for the cocaine wasn't like, the poll in terms of like likability for her or like the lowest it's ever it's a it's famous. a record yeah. Well, both isn't the both her and Biden have been a record. I don't know like, if he's been a record, but it's terrible. Oh, really? He's yeah. not the all time worst. I don't know. It would be hard to beat Nixon. Can you look that up, Doug? Who, Nixon all time all, all time worst polling presidents. Yeah, yeah all yeah. I'd like, like to that. see what those are. Yeah. Any, any guesses as they're coming up? Top three. I, Nixon's got to be up there. Yeah. Has to be up. There. Uh, I'm not a crook. Water yeah. great, Watergate. Just, Watergate was a real big, yeah destroyed big him, deal and he actually there. stepped down. Uh, God, what was his top name? three? Come on, before uh, Doug says it. Uh, Hoover was it. Uh, he was blamed a lot for the Great Depression. Uh, Woodrow Wilson. Um, I don't know. Is he one that was? Let's uh, see. Let's see if I got two of them. I'm not responsible sure. Responsible for like the Federal Reserve on? Uh, was that on his uh, term? Might have been. What do you got there, Doug? Well, they have high approval ratings and their lowest. Yeah. What are the lowest presidential approval ratings? In I history? mean, George W. Bush went down to 19 percent at one point. Yeah. Wow. Oh. oh, you know what? When was that? Probably that was before September 11th. After uh, September 11th, he's, yeah, his, went back his up approval went up. Even uh, America even Trump's rallied. lowest was 29%. Yeah. Biden, 31%. Oh, so okay. Biden wasn't the lowest. Okay, I thought Biden was the lowest. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Uh, Richard Nixon country. was down to 23. Oh, wow. So he was in as low as Bush, huh? No, Bush is the worst. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So and no, the funny thing right is the highest- What did he do that was, was the pipeline stuff that was going on around? What was going on at that time that was so- Bad that he got that bad, or huh? Two thousand eight. Oh, what? Well, so the polling was done. From oh, this was percent. It was in two thousand eight. Oh, this was after Weapons the crash. Are mass. No, no, no. You know why? Iraq was very unpopular. Well, yeah. And they, they didn't find they any didn't weapons find of mass any destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, that makes sense. Pure you know who had the highest- And the economy crashed. Yep. You know who had yet. the highest uh, approval rating of all time who? for president? Petty? George W. Bush, 92%. Again. After what? The irony. After, after September the lowest, 11th. The irony of that. Let me guess. After September 11th. What a bunch he, of fucking of sheep we are. When he, <laughs> this is fucking I so know, easy. We could, we could go from, he's the worst. He's the best. <laughs> 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 fucking, uh, that that suck? was in 91. That, that is so bad. Bro. Oh, his dad. That's his dad. Oh, is it his dad? Uh, oh, yeah. H.W.? Uh, no, that's, oh, yeah, no, that's right. George W. Bro, yeah, that is so bad. bad. Yeah. Okay. It's just, what does that say about us? Oh, that we could that we would literally make rate you as the worst ever, mm -hmm. and then in the same year or two year, within two years, we rate you as the best. You, you want to know what I? <laughs> you want to know what I heard Ping recently? I heard a candidate, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. I think I like actually like I like Vivek. Stuff I like Vivek. Also. Very intelligent. Um, he said that he wants to propose where they do an amendment. Which good luck doing that. But anyway, it's an idea, right? Where you, in order to vote, you have to pass a civics test. 
just I've like been, everybody who I've becomes been saying this forever. a naturalized citizen, or you have to serve in, in the I, military. You shit yeah. all over that idea when the, I said that. A lot of countries do that. Though, I right? said that way back You said when, you have to pay taxes. No, I said, I said I had a bunch of different options. I'm like, and, or make it like you have to pass a test. You should be able to, you have to pass, you should be yeah, a, I like a certain IQ level to vote on our president. So I could see it, now that, no, because that that's that'll never fly. But a civics test makes sense. It's the same thing that we have like when my dad became a citizen or when my grandfather or whatever, they had to pass a particular test to become a citizen. Average American. Yeah, that was my point of that. Though. Oh, okay. That was my point I was making. Is like you should have some sort of like basic comprehension sure. of politics and legislation and what the, what they're trying to pass. What they're like sure. basic, yeah. like very basic before you should be able to vote. Yeah, and I would throw myself in that. If I can't pass the test, I shouldn't yeah. get to vote. Did you see some politicians? There's politicians who are like, we need to make voting so easy that you just do it online. What a yeah. disaster would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? That's I can't look at it. Just, I mean, that was a perfect example of that with with W. Yeah, the fact that he could be rated the worst and the best in the same sitting. Come on. Yeah. It just shows you how easily we're manipulating. I know. Yeah. Come on. I know. I know. Terrible. Anyway, I'm going to take a, a, a turn here. Um, a U turn. Yeah. So we take a lot of left turns to I get know. a U turn. Let's go right. So my, I, I, you know, every once in a while, um, you know, if you, you do something and it may be attached to like a bad connection you have to something, and you think, ah, oh, but it turned out great. I have a, I have a situation that happened where I have a weird relationship with supplements and exercise or whatever. Everybody knows this. Um, I've been taking creatine pretty consistently mostly daily almost almost daily since i was 16 non-stop yeah non-stop almost non-stop taking it since i was 16 and it's the roll of the dice right supplement first come out you're gonna take this every day is it gonna hurt you is it not gonna hurt you at the time i didn't care makes me stronger so i'm gonna take it every day turns out i did something pretty awesome the creatine one the creatine it was. Did you share this? I well, I what the stud, this the how it's good yeah, that, for something to do with the liver, right? I didn't. I don't think I talked about it. No, oh, on the show. I, oh, you I you did. On the show. No, oh. I think I told you guys off. I air did hear you say it. Yeah. So, uh, for it's neuroprotective. It's good for preventing and maybe even helping with fatty liver disease or liver function, heart health. Um, it's a. Uh, it helps with methylation, yeah. um, which is a very vital process in the body. So, you know, I get blood work done and my numbers always come back and it really doesn't, I mean, I could be on all kinds of peptides, something, whatever I could have, you know, drink, you know, on a vacation, get blood tests and numbers always come out great. And I'm like, this is really weird. Like I would expect to see, I, I wonder if it's the creatine I've been taking since I was 16, every single day, uh, it's got know. such beneficial effects. There's so many studies coming out and showing its beneficial effects on not just muscle but your organs it's a health supplement it's big so, time so strange yeah big time how health funny is it that it's going to be i bet it, I, for sure it'll forever. become that marketed that more than even building muscle because that's a bigger market right Dude, health is a much bigger market it's than the just single building muscle. it's probably the single healthiest besides uh filling a nutrient deficiency it's 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 got to be the single healthiest supplement you could take Period. I remember when they first came out. Crazy. Was it though yeah. the, the the scare around it, of the, building up in your gut, and then you'd have like I, I remember bad for the kidneys. Yeah, the, picturing yep. mounds of it That's in right. my stomach. You know, like, it's, <laughs> like I remember they like they, they they painted it in that in that light. You know, my favorite. I saw a comment talking shit about you on YouTube the other day. Maybe about me? Yeah, you. Oh, those. Said, they were talking about you and your supplements. They said uh, it said. Um, I love to watch Sal do his mental gymnastics to to do to, to, for uh, to uh, uh, make justify. Ex- yeah, justify. Yeah, it's supplement use. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, oh, I'm very. Dude, we all have our things, dude. I'm very. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, how, I mean, that's why you can't. You don't. Can't. I, here's a, here's a, here's something I'll tell the audience. Don't ever idolize a human, and and this goes for anybody. And if they're in the fitness yeah. space. Don't idolize them as like Jesus of health and fitness right. or whatever. Um, many of the things that we communicate or especially well, I'll communicate are things that I, I identify in myself and I can communicate them well to other people, but it's still a challenge even for myself. So yeah. I, I'll still have challenges with uh, taking too many supplements, abusing them or stimulants uh, or whatever. <laughs> And that's just well. You know, imagine like uh, keeping up a facade that you're like just this health guru, like but you're perfect, perfect person, yeah, no. and you're going out and you're at uh, some nice dinner. You're you're having drinks and you're having a good time, and then like your fan sees you like oh, just disgusted, and you. <laughs> yeah. It's one like, of the things. What? I'm a human. One of the things I'm most proud of that we did was 
leading from that vulnerable place, right? Of leading with our flaws and admitting with the things that we don't do well, what we struggle with, most of the things that we've learned, it's because we did it the wrong way. Like, I just think that there's a lot of people that promote themselves online that promote this facade. And I just think that even if that works to get you a lot of attention and make a lot of money in the short term, it has to be torturous mm -hmm. uh, to live that way forever. And then also live in fear of like, oh my God, what if they find out that I do this and I do that and I don't do this yeah, all Wasn't the time. there a vegan influencer that got yeah, on vacation? There's, there's Someone lots took pictures of, of them eating chicken or something? There's yeah. lots of examples of that where yeah. where people get caught up and it's like they, they hammer. I mean, could you imagine if you saw a uh, carnivore med having a french fry yeah i mean like he would be <laughs> yeah, just right? he would be it would uh, destroy his credibility and, and how shitty that's got to be to be somebody who doesn't get to have a french fry yeah. for the rest of your life because yeah. you went so ham right. in that direction because you went so hard in that direction you just that chopped all if someone saw out. you do that they would they would absolutely crucify well, you let the truth be told we learned this as personal trainers uh all of us independently learned this that i, to, I was a much more effective trainer as, as defined by my clients kind of hearing what I have to say and trying what I, what I'm uh, suggesting um, when they viewed me as a human with flaws versus this perfect fit trainer who did everything right. And I remember that it took me a couple of years or a few years to figure that out that I want to communicate like the realness of like, yeah, it's hard for everybody. This is what I struggle with, whatever. It, I was more effective because they could connect more yeah. with me and they actually helped me be a better trainer. So right. I learned that through, I, I know you're, all of us. You're all relatable. Us, all of us learned that uh, through training. But then to, to what you're saying, Adam, especially if you're a um, public, you know, on social media, yeah. like, okay, do good we, luck. Do we have any time to talk about conspiracy stuff? Oh, we have to. I feel, I feel like we haven't done it in a while. What you go? People, bro, the, the people, people want, want it, it Sal. Yeah. Give bro. the people what they want. What do you got? Yeah. You guys see that video? I know Justin has. There was a video. No, I didn't. So tell me. Okay. So it's on an airplane. You saw it. Oh, the woman. That one I saw. Yeah. So there's like normal, that's that's falling under inside information. Okay, wait a second. That's falling under conspiracy thing now. Well, yeah. That really happened. That did happen. Well, yeah, but like that's okay <clears throat> for context. Like in terms of like what she's talking about, I think that's where the so I've, okay, weird conspiracy. So what sucks side I can't shout. In. I'm. So, I feel so bad. I'm not gonna shout homeboy out. He's from Houston, Texas. He's got a killer gym. We met him at the NCI event. Uh, and we met him and his team. He had great energy. Yeah, great I started energy. following him afterwards. I wish I could remember his, the name of his business and handle, so I'll figure it out. Hopefully, he'll hear this, and someone will reach out to me. It was his video that went viral. Yeah, really? And I actually I follow him, so I actually saw him post it first and talk about it. And he made this big old rant about like, you know, if you if you wake up one day and you're 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 feeling crazy, keep crazy at home because the rest of us have lives. <laughs> like it ruined his day. Like he didn't he didn't fly that day because they delayed the well, flight for 4 hours. Well, so it went viral not because a woman looks crazy, but because she doesn't look crazy. <clears throat> yeah. She's walking up from the back of the plane and she's like, that person is not real, very convicted. I'm yeah. not going back there. That is not a real person. Then another video so that one went viral. She's then like, I don't give a if you don't believe me, yes. you know, and she's just like adamant that sh what she saw was real. Yeah. And so then another video comes out with an English guy. I think it was something similar. Get me off this plane. That person's not real. And then something about how his eyes blinked vertically. Okay. Yeah, so instead of <laughs> blinking like this, they went like this. Yes. Like, now there's like a lizard. <laughs> yeah. Now someone took a picture yeah, dude. of the guy. They think the guy that that woman was talking to, and they zoomed in on his eyes, and it didn't look right. It doesn't look right. I got to see that picture. I haven't seen it. I, it yeah, doesn't look but, right. So yeah. someone's got to know who that girl is because she went viral. So you would love to hear like her history, right? So like the conspiracy this, the, the right, theory like, is around. If she has episodes or things, like, right, right. you know, like. And the theory is around uh, the longstanding uh, conspiracy theory that they're shape-shifting lizard people. Yeah. yeah. You see funny <laughs> YouTube videos about it. Because if I saw if that video, it. okay, I mean, because the lady does seem like she, I mean, you guys are saying she's kind of normal, but she does seem like she's a little a little crazy. But I mean, if you got that scared, you would look a little crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. I so, mean, that's kind of how you would act. I guess so, that's how I look at it. Yeah, yeah. So that is kind of how you would act. So the, the real question is, because if that was like... Katrina, who did that? I would freak the fuck out. Yeah, because that's you like, know your not, wife yeah, and, yeah, I know that she's not like that at all. And for her to feel that convicted that she's going to get off a plane and, and right. do that, like, I would be scared to death. So it would be really interesting to know somebody who knows her and how they feel about her character because someone who is kind of yeah. crazy and does crazy shit, like, that they would also be liable to probably do something like that. Yeah. But if it's, I like got to sneak another one in here. Um, and I don't know how recent this was or not, but 
Yeah, this isn't tying into the whole like moon landing stuff and all that, but it's with Buzz Aldrin. Oh. And so he actually had made a trip to Antarctica and he's like in his late 80s, right? And he went down there to, I guess, explore the South Pole. And uh, I guess there's a part of the South Pole where there's, I mean, now this part is, I think, somewhat conspiracy or if you could actually see this on google earth or not that there's like a part of uh, a formation of rocks that looks kind of like a pyramid and so like what he what 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 the weird part is that i wanted to kind of bring up was his weird tweet so after so basically what happened they had to end his trip short because i mean he's old and so he had like i think he had like a cardiac arrest or he had some kind of episode that like just shut it down but of the conspiracy of it is is that he saw something so scary that it like caused him mm -hmm. to have like an episode uh and so it because here's the tweet like after uh, his trip it said we are all in danger it is evil itself what that's it that's his tweet he and tweets that to the world yeah <gasps> like what the heck is he talking about that is weird uh oh right like i just was like trying to think about that i'm like i mean is it real is it i mean and here's a, the problem is like all these dumb websites like snopes and all these things are like totally like compromised like i don't trust like barely any of these websites that like uh, uh are so called you know debunkers. Like, yeah debunkers like give me a break like i've seen what you did through the whole covid stuff so um yeah like so i don't i don't know but at the same time that's his real tweet like why would you say that yeah what is that yeah that's weird isn't that that's freaky that is so weird by the way you could go you can find <laughs> videos on youtube and people have made compilations of celebrities and politicians shape-shifting in strange ways oh I've seen eyes changing like, like, like katie perry i've stuff. seen yeah. <laughs> well yeah there's just weird uh, weird stuff yeah. uh you know so i don't i, don't, I mean uh, uh, do i think lizard people are shit no the truth is out there there's boy a, if that a, was true there's, that a pyra <laughs> there's a pyramid in antarctica yeah i didn't know that what uh, yeah yeah it, why are pyramids so common around the world the cultures that never saw each other connect or, or contact or exactly. in contact with each other just yeah just think about that for a bit well here's the thing okay now you're going to get into my sort of like uh, <laughs> thought process. Okay. Well, go, please, go back. Could you please, if we're going to do this past the joint, come on. Like yeah, this, I, I would love to, this but is... I would love to. But the, I mean, I think we've been running too long here yeah. for me to really get into this. Yeah. But um, yeah. So the thing is they, they keep finding these cultures that were like predates all of the history that we've already been taught. Uh, yeah. Right. And so it's like my thought process is that we're just, we're just like all of the cultures after that were just like, copying and and trying to mm. replicate what was already there that got wiped out yeah uh, which was way more advanced than we gave it credit for so that would be like my summary yeah. i mean that's really like graham Han hancock stuff yeah. right i mean he's like the main guy who like he's as bro. close to an alignment of how i've been thinking forever bro there's ancient like cave paintings and drawings of what look like the grays which are the aliens that everybody knows or ufos like very strangely which is really weird. Yeah. There's lots of weird shit out there. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's know. getting weirder. So, <laughs> well, on who a, knows? Broken simulation. Who I'm, knows? I'm pretty sure you guys aren't lizards. Yeah. Who would be the most likely? Doug. Doug yes. would be the most likely. I'm <laughs> sure Doug. He's the only one that doesn't age. Yeah. Or reverse saw, aging. He's yeah. got Benjamin Button syndrome going yeah. on there. For sure he's the most likely. So <laughs> I, I saw him eating ice cream one time and his tongue just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One lick. The Pay whole attention, thing you guys. It was fly flavored. I saw him. He was laying on a big boulder naked one time in the sun. I was hey, like, I have. Here? I got a. Uh, <laughs> I got a cool uh, shout out. This was actually really neat. This happened uh, just a couple, two days ago. I think it happened. Um, so uh, a lot of times you'll hear music in the background at my house when I'm barbecuing and stuff like that on my Instagram stories. And I've been on this kick. I have a, a playlist that I shared uh, to. Teddy Swim's playlist. It's got a bunch of different random songs, a lot of country music on there that I like. And so it's been playing in the background a lot. And I got a DM the other day that I actually opened and read because I don't open a lot of those these days. And I open it up and it says, hey, I, you know, I, I, I see your uh, your playlist and I see you you listen to Russell Dickerson. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. He's one of my favorite country singers. Did you know that he's a big fan of Mind Pump? And I'm like, no, I had no idea. She sends me a YouTube clip of Russell Dickerson on on YouTube and he's got a video of him and he shouts out uh, I think he's following our Maps 15 program. Yeah, that cool? yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, no. So then I uh sent over a message to him and uh found out he we have a mutual friend 
And my my buddy, I text my buddy who's got his his personal number and stuff like that. And then he texts him, and then we're all in a, a group thread texting each other back and forth. But uh, I've been listening to his music for at least a year, if not two years, and love his stuff. And then to hear that he's a big mind pump fan, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, so that's cool. What's his page? Give him, let's give him a uh, Russelled, I think, is what it is. R U S S E L L E D. Yep. Yes, that's it right there. Interested in optimizing your hormones uh, by taking maybe testosterone or working with hormones like DHEA or pregnenolone. We'll do it with a doctor. Get your blood tested. See where your hormones all are, men and women, and get them optimized. Uh, the people we work with also work with peptides. So you might have heard of the peptide uh, Ozempic or the generic name semaglutide. There's those and many, many other peptides that can accelerate your body's ability to burn body fat, build muscle, boost your longevity or immunity, help with sleep, libido, so much. It's pretty awesome. Go check it out. Go talk to the doctors at mphormones.com. All right, back to the show. First question is from Haley v Valine. What are the pros and cons of working out barefoot, especially for the lower body? Well, before we talk about the pros and cons, uh, you, you, sh you have to... Have sexy There's feet. a process. <laughs> to, <laughs> wait, sexy what? feet? <laughs> <laughs> if you have feet that look like don't, mine, don't uh, do, you're out. You have ugly ass feet. Don't do this. <laughs> cover your feet. Yeah, cover your feet. Or at least cover don't do it in public. Cover, some, them, cover them ugly ass feet. No, there's some qualifiers. Okay. Um, if you're always wearing shoes, you you always walk in shoes, and then you decide you're going to take your shoes off and try to do strength training with bare feet. Understand that your feet are covered in muscles. There's some mobility in your feet. Your feet have to stabilize you. And if your body has learned how to stabilize with shoes on and you take them off, it's like all of a sudden you're lifting. You always lift with the belt, with a weight belt, and then you take it off. It could make your exercises actually dangerous. So um, not a good idea to go from wearing shoes all the time than to just randomly going barefoot. Yeah. Using the same weight, training how you always train. Sitting on the couch to all of a sudden sprinting. Yes. That's a bad idea. You're going to hurt yourself. So... If you want to try to train barefoot, go way lighter, way less intensity, and give yourself a long time to get better at training with your feet uh, being barefoot. And also include feet strengthening exercises and articulation, that kind of stuff, because uh, they play a very big role in stabilization and in support and in ankle mobility, which then contributes to knee function, hip function, and so on. So uh, don't just... Go barefoot all of a sudden. That's yeah, the same advice that we give with anything, right? We always talk about doing the least amount possible, elicit the most amount of change. The same thing would go for this. You going from never working out barefoot to doing full one-hour routines of your normal training session would destroy your feet. There's yeah. no reason to do that. I remember when I got on this kick um, and what I started to just – so back when I used to have the Bulldogs, we basically walked around the block one time. And so it started with I would get home – take my shoes off and then just be barefoot in my house the rest of the day. I would go outside. I'd walk the dogs around the block. Yeah, but you were also, you have to tell them that you were intentional though. It wasn't like you just walked barefoot. You had to, you focused on yeah, how I your mean, feet move. I mean, that's the idea, right? If you're trying to work on a better connection to your feet, then, then doing walking with intent uh, is is the way to go. The same way that you would work yeah. out with intent, right? Not just moving your arm, flailing your arms around, right? The same thing goes with your, your feet. And then even as, as stupid as it may sound, but I would be barefoot at home and I would be, you know, gripping the carpet and Moving playing around with stuff, stuff or I'd try to pick a toy up with my foot. Like, and I think just incorporating it into your day like that. And brushing Katrina's hair. And, <laughs> <laughs> brushing my teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eating dinner, you know. No, so, no. no, no. So I you just slowly, I actually think the workout was one of the last places that I went, mm -hmm. right? Because that's more intense. Loading the uh, a, a barbell back squat barefoot is way more intense than just walking around outside barefoot. Mm -hmm. And so the first step to me was, if I wear shoes 80% of the time, well, let's wear shoes 50% of the time. And then let's wear shoes 30% of the time. And then now let's start to do things like intentional walking the dogs mm -hmm. and picking stuff up while I'm in my house. And then eventually it was, oh, I barefoot for an, ex I do a one exercise barefoot. And those like, then I, and then I do a workout. And so just build up to it. That's all. You don't want to go make the mistake that some people do. They put those barefoot shoes on. And they go for runs yeah. the first time. Remember when that up. happened? There was that book that came out that showed. Born, the, the, born to Run, I believe. Yeah. And it was the guy went and studied 
cultures that run their whole lives. They don't run with shoes on. He, he, he watched how the foot struck the ground. And your foot and your body does strike the ground differently barefoot than it would with shoes on. Like the, the foot and the ankle are shock absorbers, whereas when you wear big, cushy running shoes, you end up using the shoe as a shock absorber with your heel. And what a lot of people did is they read that book they threw their shoes away and went running immediately barefoot and injuries galore because yeah. their bodies had learned how to move with shoes. You can't transition that quickly. In fact, you can't even transition like at a medium pace. This takes a long time. This takes a very long time. Like it took you to do workouts, full workouts barefoot, like a year. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And I mean, to kind of, okay, we got the precautionary kind of yeah. uh, information out there, but like once you get to the point where you have like established that and you're able to walk around barefoot comfortably, you're getting stronger, you're doing the articulations, you start to kind of make your way towards the gym. And um, like I started to do lunges, I started to do a lot of like leg exercises and then start to start loading my back a little heavier with the squat rack. And what I didn't notice was just how much more anchored I was yeah. and, and how much better in terms of like uh, the actual mechanics of the squat got for me because in, just like anything else if you have if it's that feedback that your body is more secure and your joints are more accounted for like so if your feet are actually stronger it's going to support your ankle it's going to work its way all the way up the kinetic chain yeah. everything's going to respond uh, m more appropriately and there's not going to be as much dysfunction because really, I mean, this is one of those things I think is uh, uh, I, I wish we would have learned to focus more on the feet oh, as yeah. trainers uh, earlier in my career. Well, it's weird. It's like, this is how I get people to understand it. Imagine if from the age of one till now, you wore gloves, snow gloves, snow gloves for 90% yeah. of the time you use your hands. Yeah. Imagine how much loss of function, articulation, control, strength you would have in your hands. Well, that's what we've done with our feet. In yeah. fact, right. when we were kids, they don't do this anymore, but when we were kids, they encouraged parents to put shoes on that were really stiff sold and a lot of support is what they would say. Oh, mm -hmm. it helps your toddler walk. We still got stupid stuff mm -hmm. like and that. And what it does is it actually it's still, trains I, your body to to, to yeah. move differently. I, I like talking well. about this because I, I got into a lot of stuff with family with my son because I was very adamant about no shoes. And it, they everybody tried to freak out on me. Yeah. Like, he's, like he's made of glass. Like he can't walk on gravel barefoot. It's like the reason why gr walking gravel it hurts like hell for you is because you can't because you have weak ass feet. Yeah. If he learns to do that early, yep. he can handle that. It's not that crazy. It's not like he's going to cut himself or hurt himself yeah. by walking on some gravel or dirt. It's that you guys have learned, you guys have taught your feet to go to sleep by putting them in socks and shoes your whole entire life. So, you know, a good way to kind of introduce it into the training, what I did uh, I was going through mass performance at that time is I made all the mobility workouts barefoot. Yeah, see, that's oh, good. Yeah. Cause it's all barefoot. Yeah. I mean, it's all body weight, yeah, right? Yeah. So you're doing all these mobility moves. It's a good first injury. And, you're, and that, that's all, mobility is all about getting connected. Yeah. So I loved doing all of that first barefoot and then starting to introduce the weight training. So if oh, you've sure. never ran, if this is something you want to do, you haven't ran or you haven't done performance in a long time, uh, that's a good way to in introduce uh, barefoot training before you start loading the barbell with bare feet. Yeah. Do mobility sessions barefoot. Yeah, by the way, the, the, the worst demographic, what I mean by worst is the demographic of people that will require <laughs> the longest transitionary time from shoes to barefoot are women that wear heels a lot. So if you wear heels a lot, you have a professional job, you're always in heels or pumps, there's another level that you have to work through, which is now you got to get used to walking with flat shoes and then barefoot. Um, and you may find you'll get plantar fasciitis and tight Achilles because your body's acclimated to, to walking with your heel elevated. Isn't it ironic that the popularity of heels, uh, I'm assuming had a lot to do with how curvy and shapely it made the the legs and butt look on women yeah it makes the, and it, it actually the, the pelvis and anterior tilt and it actually makes them more quad dominant and almost impossible for them to build their butt Isn't that funny? yeah it's okay. kind of ironic when you think about it right that you that we it props it up but it doesn't actually yeah, build it yeah so because when they're up on their tippy toes right there their calves and their, their hamstrings more knee extension when you yeah, squat, so, yeah so so it, it takes you it, instantaneously you look a little bit better than your heels but then it, it, it actually crutches you 
when it comes to trying to build the butt because now you become so quad dominant, you go yep. to do squats, deadlifts, these movements that are supposed to build the butt, and you end up just up in your quads. There's a, a huge group of women that struggle with that for that reason. Next question is from Andy Lash. You guys have been consistently positive about sled work. What is the best way to add it to something like MAPS Anabolic? Yeah, so um, the the cool thing about sled work is it's a low skill, high value, low, low risk. damage, low risk exercise. Very few exercises kind of have all that put together. Low skill because almost anybody can push a sled, mm -hmm. okay? Um, it doesn't cause a lot of damage because there's not a negative portion of the rep, like lowering the weight. It's all positive, and the negative is what causes a lot of damage. Um, and it's very functional. There's lots of carryover. So what's, what, what that does is it allows you to add it to your workouts without you know, adding necessarily too much volume or damage and requiring too much uh, recovery or more recovery. So where would you add this on a program like MAPS Anabolic or any other program? If you uh, feel like you can handle more volume, adding a few sets to the end of your leg workouts or even at the beginning of your leg workouts with sled work, it's going to require a little bit more recovery, but not a ton. And so it's one of those exercises that a lot of people can add mm -hmm. and gain I, benefit. I did this. Yep. So I actually have a, a, a personal protocol, how I added it to MAPS Anabolic. So we talk a lot about, uh, you know, as kind of fitness enthusiasts, we always kind of teeter on, you know, pushing the limits mm. uh, and, or we're always, you know, pushing that, uh, that line or finding that line of overtraining. Right. Uh, so I would add the sled in like this. So if it was a week where I did a really good job of keeping two in the tank, not overreaching, then I'm, I would add it to a workout somewhere, a couple, like maybe two rounds or three rounds of sled drives at the end of my workout. If I had a week where I overreached on squats, maybe I was kind of pushing a PR a little bit or did an extra set or did a little too much and I felt, I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm more sore than I need to be. Then I would actually replace yeah, good idea. like front yeah. squats the next, cause we have like a lot of times back squats and front squats in, in the week. I would replace the front squats with sled drives instead. So I would use it as a way to either one, increase yeah. volume uh, and, and intensity for my week because I did a good job of pulling back on the other days of legs. Or if it was a day when I, or a week where I knew I overreached, I would actually replace it with a, a, a more taxing exercise, like let's say barbell yeah. back squats or front squats. Yeah, I do the same, especially replacing it when, um, let's say there's been a few weeks or, or a week or so I've, I've had off mm -hmm. uh, to where I'm, I'm trying to ramp back or like if, if, if it's like a client of mine that hasn't really trained legs heavy in a long time, like that's a great place to start in terms of like just reintroducing their legs to getting that kind of contraction and, and getting them to, to respond. So uh, it, it's really valuable for that to just add in that kind of practice and volume. Yeah. At the moment, I would say, um, I probably do sled work instead of traditional barbell work every third week, I would say. And it just keeps my joints healthy. Yeah. I have no loss in performance and strength. See, I feel uh, like anytime my like joints talk saying, to me, where yeah. it's like, you notice that like you've been pushing it for yep. a couple of weeks yep. and you're like, mm, I need mm -hmm. to have a week where 100%. I back off the back squats. hundred percent. That's exactly how I use it. Like I ex gave the example of it being week to week, but sometimes it would yep. look like that, right? I have two, three weeks in a row of like consistent barbell work and then it never fails. I always overreach a little bit. And then that yep. was always my signal of, Oh, this week I'm going to do sled work instead yep. of doing barbell. Well, back and also just to like, kind of add in uh, as far as our programs and stuff, like we did add in our maps of cardio has programmed in sled. And we did that, uh, intentionally. So you get that kind of cardiovascular output at, um, it, without it, the irony is like, we didn't program any running really in, in maps cardio. No, so. that's for people to do themselves. Cause yeah. you just run, but you just do that. Yeah. Next question is from e Morse fourteen forty. Why doesn't Maps Prime Pro include knees? Is, I love this is one. it because most knee issues are actually hip and ankle issues? Are you considering adding knees to the program in the future? Yeah. It's, okay. So <laughs> you can't. You can't. There is no mobility knees. Yeah. So okay. Strengthen your quads and your hamstrings, which both flex and extend the knee, contribute to healthy knees. But if you have kind of chronic knee pain. Um, and you can't figure out what kind of what's going on. 
It's coming from mobility or stability issues in hip the ankle or the hip. Always. That's it. Always. Because the knee flexes and extends. It just, it's, it, it does, yeah. that's it. It's it a doesn't, hinge. And, and, yeah. and then the only other condition where you have a knee issue that is not related to that, if you had an acute injury. If yeah. someone takes a baseball bat to your yeah, Or your you kneecap, twisted your knee or your something Your kneecap, like uh, it, it's not lacking mo mo knee mobility work there. It just needs to heal and recover. So if you got knee issues that's acute, there is no knee mobility stuff that no, you're going rest. to do. It's just rest and recover yeah. if you have chronic knee pain it is always related to either ankle or hip that's so it because uh just so people understand if you look at the knee it it bends and it extends that's it okay it doesn't rotate i mean there's a little bit of give but that's because the ligaments and tendons allow that yeah. there's no muscles You're stretching it basically. there's no movement or muscles that rotate the knee or bend it laterally it only flexes and extends that's it but the ankle it rotates it bends laterally it flexes it extends um it's very mobile in that sense the hip Same even thing. more so right so what happens when you're doing squats or lunges or deadlifts or any other exercise that uses the lower body if the hips or the ankles are not working optimally then what happens with the knee is the ligaments start to support the load the lateral ligaments or the ligaments that that prevent the knee from twisting like let's say you do a squat and your ankle is is too tight. And what ends up happening when that happens is your foot will start to turn out as you squat. Well, that turning out, your hip can handle. But your knee, that place is, that place is a strain on the meniscus in particular. So you're like, oh, my knee hurts when I squat. Well, it's not the knee. It's coming from the ankle or maybe from the hip. So when you look at MAPS Prime Pro, it's got every joint except the knee in there because, well, you want to get better knees. We got to work on the ankles, the foot, and the, and the hip. Next question is from Local Noon Enterprises. What is the number one thing to keep in mind when training seniors, 70 plus, who have never weight trained before? Okay, it's the it's the same thing that you keep in mind when training anybody, but you have to be far more conscious and considerate when you're, when you're training people in this age group, which is you must train them appropriately. What does that mean? Um, it doesn't take much at all to get a senior who's never weight trained before to get their body to, 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 to send a signal to get it to get stronger or improve its fitness. Okay. And, it, and for a trainer or somebody who's not experienced with this, they almost always overdo it because you get a senior who's 70, you sit him down on the bench and you say, okay, um, let's have you sit up and stand, you know, uh, stand up and sit down. And we'll do that as an exercise. It's like a box squat with no weight, right? Very good traditional exercise to do with a senior. And then they'll have the person go until the person gets tired. And they'll be like, oh, that was appropriate. You overdid it. Yeah, yeah you overdid Because it. the most that this person who never exercises in this age group gets up and sits, you know, gets up and sits down is like one. Like they'll do it when they watch No, TV, like literally like, think about it from mathematical or volume, right? Like they probably get out of their bed once, they get off the toilet maybe twice. Yep. They probably get in and out of their car twice. Yeah. You know, So they literally do that body weight squat. And it's not like all five, at once. Yeah, yeah, five to six times with huge rest periods in yep. between. So you doing 15 that in a row. You hammered them. Yeah, is Too already much. like that. You yeah. just have to think that way. It's like you have to find. And that's why your point of, I mean, it's the same as almost the advice is kind of the same for anybody's meeting them where they're at. Because you could also have a 70 year old who still water skis, yeah. deadlifts. Very active. Yeah, very yeah, active, yeah. does a lot of physical stuff. Yeah, is, very you know, different. It's, yeah, and, and that, that person has a total different, and that matters more than 70, right? right. What matters more is what does this person do how on a- How fragile they are, how like uh, equipped they still and, are. And how long have yeah. they been this way yeah. for how many years? Like, like if you've been relatively sedentary and with no weight training, no real physical activity for decades, like, boy, this is going to be a really sensitive person. I'm not going to have to hard do with hardly gradual anything. process. Yeah, oh. but if this is a 70-year-old who has been very physical most of their life and now they're wanting to really pick up strength training, well, you know, maybe I can start them somewhere else. I'll give you an example. This is general, so obviously there's a difference between individuals, but I'm going to give you a general starter beginner workout for someone in this age group because at some point this became uh, uh, like a like 30 percent of my clients uh, because i trained doctors they send me their clients and or their patients so i had a lot of clients that were like 65 to 85 at one point i loved training it was always real fun and so here's a general like workout for somebody who just hired me who's never strength trained who's in this age group um i would do this i'd have them come in and I'd 
I'd have them sit down on a bench. I'd watch how they sit down. Then I would adjust the height of the bench with like foam pads. And the first exercise would be to sit down with control and stand up. And we would do like three to five reps. We'd rest three to five minutes. And then we do like another one or two of those. Literally, that's it. And they think they could probably do 10 or 15, but I do like three to five. Then the next exercise, literally, I'd have them sit up real tall. I put my hand between their shoulder blades and I had them squeeze their shoulder blades back as hard as they could hold it for two seconds and then relax. And we would do that like six to eight times and we'd rest three to five minutes and repeat that a couple more times. And then the third exercise, okay, this would be the last exercise is that I have them sit up real tall. I'd have them take their hand with their thumb kind of pointing up like they're going to hitchhike, but their arm straight. And I'd have them come back and go as high and straight as they possibly could and hold that for like three to five seconds yeah. and then bring it back down. We do like four reps of that. So you'll notice there was no weight uh, involved right. in the upper body exercises at all. And that would be it. Simplicity is king yeah. and, and going very slow and intentional with every one of these movements and allowing them to feel their way through it, communicate mm -hmm. through it. Like, I mean, that's really the, the utmost intention because it's really about how they're going to feel the next day, you yeah. know, and like you got to really uh, be sensitive to how, how to gauge that. And also I found that, you know, it, a good way to motivate them during the sets is a Werther's original. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you place it. Just, you, you, just reach down and pick that up. Here, okay, move it like six inches. Do a good right, job. Get that again. Yeah. <laughs> hey, no, uh, the first phase of map symmetry it was, is, a, is a great place for it's somebody. It's too like much you. volume, but it's a good place to look. Those. So if you are a trainer, I'm assuming this is a trainer who's asking this, I would own that program. I would own uh, uh, Prime Pro and I would have Starter. I think the, a blend yeah. of all that, the, all the exercises and things we have in there. And then, of course, still applying that original rule that we said of a yeah. plate, you know, meet them where they're at, because that could be literally, you know, getting up and down 10 times. For this, a and now, yeah. what I'm about to say is going to sound outside of the scope of personal training, but I believe it to be within the scope because if you're, if you really believe your job is to improve the health of an individual, then that is, uh, uh, you know, that's more than just exercise and nutrition. And so what we would do in between sets would be a lot of conversation. And I would ask a lot of questions and it, it, they, it, I believe it really did contribute to their improvements in health because many of these people in this age group had very little uh, the, you know, interaction with people. Some of them lived on their own or they had a caretaker and their families didn't visit them except for maybe once a week. And they'd come in in between sets. We'd talk and ask them questions. By the way, people in this age, I know you're making the joke about the Werther's original or whatever, but if they're sharp. That wasn't a joke. And, uh, Boy, I like them too, by the way. I don't know. That's one of my favorites. You guys don't like those? They're so good. Butter, and butterscotch discs are really good too. But yeah. If you- Ginger uh, snaps. Uh, when you find someone in this age group and they're sharp, the wisdom and stuff that you could like gather from is this is why I used to love training them. I would ask them all these questions, and I oh, remember they're a wealth of knowledge. Oh, I was best. just I would get advice yeah. on marriage and raising kids and yeah. society, and oh, it's I've seen this before. This happened in when whatever, and I'm like, oh my god, this is so amazing. But take it very easy, and the next day they should feel better. So you should not call them. And Mrs. Johnson says, oh, I, my legs are really sore. She'd be like, wow, I feel my back doesn't hurt as much. Boom, you know you did the right amount of volume. Uh, and training and they improve and get stronger um, just like anybody else. And the, the payback is actually higher because uh, they start to become more independent. Yeah, it's which life changing. Is, yeah. Which is pretty awesome. Look, if you like mind pump, you want to follow some of our workouts, but you want to start small, go to mind pump media on Instagram for under $5 a month. You get a programmed workout every single week right there. Mind pump media on Instagram. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mind pump. Justin, I'm at mind pump to Stefano and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 